Setting a clean install for Windows 11 is difficult, but with this guide, it's going to fix a lot of problems for you. It's going to remove all the bloat on just the install CD using a new method I just found out a couple days ago. And then we're also going to just customize it using a couple tried and true debloat methods. And that way you have more of like a Windows 7 feel in Windows 11. So with that said, let's get into it. So the first thing is a new tool for basically during install, choosing a language. Uh, credit to Theo Joe on this tip. Absolutely amazing. We'll get into that. And then I uh, will probably go through, do a deep bloat using my toolbox. I've done a lot of updates just in the past two weeks on this. Been working really hard uh, pretty much all throughout the month of July on it. And then uh, actually changing the browser from Edge and getting rid of Edge completely because I just don't like it. But if you do, you can just not do that section of the video. So let's get into the actual install. We'll load up a fresh VM. So this is the first trick on here is mainly just to take the time currency format and change this to English world from English world. You'll actually remove all like TikTok, prime video, all those links on your start menu. It just makes it a little bit easier and to fix, uh, it actually disables Microsoft store as well, which is really nice, but it's really easy to re enable and I'll show that. So let's just go next and we're just going to do a fresh install. No changes from the stock settings here. Typically, I always like Windows 11 Pro. If you have home, I highly recommend upgrading to Pro. Use a key, whatever you can find, because then you can really use group policy a lot easier. There's hacks to get it available in home, but a lot of times feature updates disable those. Uh, you run into problems. So I always like Windows 11 Pro if you're choosing a version. All right, with the initial install done, it's going to restart, and I'll see you on the desktop. Now, on initial startup, you're going to run into this problem before hitting the desktop. It's a timeout, so it'll probably sit there for about 60 seconds, maybe up to two minutes, and then give you this OOBE, which is just out of box experience that we're going through. Let's just skip through this and uh, we'll just set it up as we normally would. We're going to skip the second layout. We're just going to name the device test next. And then on this, you always want to choose work and school if you're going to do an offline account, which I always recommend and I have always just kind of have a habit of doing. If you have a Microsoft account and you're doing stuff through the store, you might do personal use. Uh, but I still like the old school way of doing things. We're just going to sign in options, domain join, and then we're just going to name this one test. And um, or let's just go test user next uh, for password. Always leave this blank when setting up a test account because you get to skip every single security questions and you just get done a lot quicker from this uh, little hack. Obviously set a password after you log in, but this way makes it quite a bit faster. All right, and here we go. Let's see what the actual startup looks like. You can see we can still get like the edge garbage here. We got these widgets. Uh, you have uh, just a chat and a whole bunch of stuff right down here not a, not a very great experience but a lot better than just using english english with the world obviously you can see we don't have any of the shortcut links for any of the other bloatware whether it's amazon prime tiktok all that uh, all that garbage so it's a lot better starting point that's why i like it and you will notice if you launch into the store it should give a region error it says not available we can easily bypass this we'll just open up settings and type region and from region you can easily just set it from world to united states and you're pretty much done close that out restart the store and then you can log in and use the microsoft store but i kind of like the fact that if you don't want to ever use the microsoft store you can just leave it on world and you never have to worry about it intruding on what you're doing which is kind of nice uh, so with that said let's uh, deep bloat the rest of it this one, we're going to use my script. We're just going to launch into terminal as an administrator. We'll just right clicking the start menu and terminal as admin. We'll do IRM Chris Titus.com forward slash win and pipe symbol with an IEX. I'm not going to install chocolate just for brevity and just do brave install here. So we get another browser. So you'll see this go ahead and load up. I have changed Winget to be uh, work on every single Windows system. So if you want to install and do this on Windows Server, you want to install it on LTSC, uh, you can actually install Winget now, which is nice. All right, with Brave installed, we're going to just go to Tweaks. 
I recommend just doing this desktop recommended tweaks. Should be uh, plenty fine for you. Nothing crazy here. I'll enable dark theme, add alternate performance, and I'll also remove Microsoft Edge and remove Cortana, which Cortana is more of a GPO setting. So it'll uh, just make sure it doesn't mess with your search bar down here. Let's run those tweaks. And if you want to see kind of what it's doing, we'll just split the screen and say run tweaks. All right, the actual tweaks are done. Now it's going to actually launch into a edge removal tool. Uh, Avio on GitHub is where I got this tool from. I've obviously uh, copied and modified it just a hair to suit my needs, but it will go ahead and remove edge, remove all the shortcuts, and also do any redirects. So if you're on here and like you see a news story and you want to go ahead and pop up or maybe even widgets, um, you could actually do that. Uh, but we'll demonstrate that on reboot. After doing tweaks, of course, we need to do a restart as we've modified the system a bit. A uh, couple things here that I will do is just taskbar settings. I'm actually removing widgets. Uh, I'll leave search there for now and we'll disable that and then just change it to left uh, alignment as I kind of like it there. I don't like using a lot of tools. There's a lot of stuff up, out there to change these. I kind of like sticking to like just official Microsoft stuff. Uh, so it just leaves a more minimal clean system. Kind of gives me, it reminds me of that Windows 7 aesthetic uh, that I, I really enjoyed. All right, we've rebooted. We're back on our desktop here. You can see we have all that. If we go into search, let's say you click on something here, it should open up in Brave. So let's just click on something, see if it launches Brave for us. And it wasn't launching right there, so we'll just set it as the default browser. We just have to finish setting up Brave. All right, now as Brave as the default browser, it should default to that. So if you have multiple browsers, it's always gonna just default to whatever set as your stock. So you can see, opens everything up. It's not uh, nothing with Microsoft Edge. We, we are all, everything redirects to Brave, so you never have to see Edge if you don't want. And if we're looking at uh, Task Manager, we can just do Control-Shift-Escape for that. Uh, we're down to about 84 processes. This is usually about 140, 150 on a fresh install. Uh, I've been modifying things. Uh, obviously, you can get lower than this. I've covered tools in the past that strips out Defender and all these other things. I kind of caution against that just because I still want you to run updates. I still want you to not have anything break on your system. And I don't want you to be missing any dependency for like a video game. That That's not my intention. So I try and straddle that line of what's really kept and what's needed to all the bloat that comes with it. There's still some telemetry and other stuff, but it's minimized to a point to where you should be able to install whatever it is you need to run and get a, a nice experience and not have to deal with all the shenanigans you get with a stock Microsoft install. From here, there's a lot of things you can do to further improve your system, but this is basically the, the, the way I would set every single install up to where you'll always have a great experience out of the get-go and you don't have to worry about things not working and you have a, a nice system that isn't just riddled with a bunch of garbage. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If I missed something, let me know down there and I'll see you in the next one.